Praise God. God bless you. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, offenses will come. He didn't say, if you are a nice person, if you are a good person, offenses will not come. He said, betrayal will come, disappointments will come, things that are not fair will come. But how we deal with all these things will determine our future, our everyday. You can be either move forward with new hope, trusting God, or you can get stuck with bitter disappointments and fear. Here is the key. Pressure is going to produce something in every one of us without doubt. Either faith, hope, strength, endurance, or pressure is going to produce weakness, fear, depression, and discouragement. What is your pressure in your life producing? Are you seeing it as negative, not fair, and letting it defeat you and attempt them? Or are you attempting them for your good, trusting God to make everything better? As Bible says, everything happens for the good of those who trust Him, those who love Him. Today, we are going to learn about the roots and fruits in Christ that we need to develop. Our title is, God answers your prayers according to the fruit growing in you. In Isaiah 37, 31, we read, The remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear the fruit upward. This is a description of Lord's church in every age. According to the election of grace, the few that are chosen of God, that is you and me and many others like us who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, they are the redeemed of God. They are the remnants, the little flock of his, a small number that enter at the straight gate and be saved. This scripture continues to say, they shall gain root downward and bear fruit upward. The sense is that those people, that is the true believers, taking root in the love of God, taking root in the obedience of God, naturally bear fruit upward. And that is the source of their salvation and source of all blessings to live peaceably and prosperously, abounding with good things. So root has to go down and fruit has to come up. What is this root? We all should have roots of God inside. We are all children of God. This root is the principles of God, the, the life principle of Jesus Christ has to go inside. As the life principle of Jesus Christ goes inside, fruits will definitely come. That is the source of our blessings. In trying times and in windy seasons, we will have fruits from humility and fear of God. Root downward and fruit upward. We are called in Christ for this purpose. We are not called to come and sit in the church every Sunday, warm up the chair and go back. We should have fruits in life. We should have blessings in life. We should be known as the children of God. We are different from other people, isn't it? Through the fruits, people will understand who we are. For the fruits, definitely we need to have roots inside. Bearing fruit is so important for every child of God for many reasons. Jesus says in John 15, 16 very clearly, listen to me. You didn't choose me, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Hmm? The fruit that will last, then, then Father will give whatever you ask. It's a promise that he will give whatever we ask. In Jesus' name, ask anything. These are the scriptures, John 14, 13 and 14, John 16, 23. It is clearly written, in Jesus' name, ask anything you will receive. But there is a condition. What is the condition? You should have a name as Christian. You should go to church every Sunday. Or you should be a member of some non-church. These conditions, no. You should have my fruit. You didn't choose me. I chose you. We all know that. We are today here. It's not by our own will or our own desire. We know that today to sit in this place, we all suffered. Many people hated us. Many people rejected us. 
Today also many people are rejecting us because we are Pentecost. Isn't it? He says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Why? To go and produce fruit. Fruit that lasts forever. Then, come and ask me anything. It will be given to you. See, dear friends. So, without fruit, God will answer anyone? No. Hallelujah. Second, so we need fruits for our prayers to be answered. Second, you can win souls for Christ only when you have fruit. God has sent Jesus to save the people from their sins and their consequences and bless them, Acts 3.26. And what kind of fruits God wants from us? Galatians 5.22 and 23 state, Love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, faithfulness, self-control, and serving God. Helping people to know who Jesus is. Eh? This is the fruit. Not the fruit from our spirit. Every day we are producing fruits from our spirit. That means we live how we want. Hmm? If somebody is angry, I am angry. If somebody is fighting with me, I will fight. Hmm? That are the fruits we are producing. No patience, arrogance, ego. That is the fruit we are producing. He is telling, I chose you to stop producing those fruits. Start producing my fruits. Hmm? Love. Love the people who are hating you. Forgive the people. Have patience. We are very impatient. Hmm? Be gentle. We are very rude. Have self-control. We don't have self-control. Serve God. Bring souls to church. We are very selfish. We live for ourselves. Me, 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 me world. We are living in the me, me world. And we are also one among me person. He said, stop. 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, Jesus died on the cross so that no more we will live for ourselves but for him. This is Christian life. But for him means for righteousness. He doesn't want anything from us. He doesn't want a, a sannyasi life from us, a normal life, loving people. People will offend us, people will hate us, people will betray us, people will disappoint us. Even if we do good things to the people, people are so ungrateful. Hmm? We expect many things from people, but we don't get. Isn't it? So forgive the people in this world. Live like me. That is what Jesus is telling. This is Christian life. Is it possible? That's why we are here today. That is why we are coming on every Sunday and wasting our time. We can do many other things at home. Hmm? We should have progress in life. We should have love and joy. We should have peace. We should have good health. We should not be bedridden. Hmm? This is Christian life. Hallelujah. So, winning soul. Is the fruit of spirit, Hebrews 10.24 and Hebrews 3.13. Proverb 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures soul is wise. Wise people will capture souls. Wise people. Foolish people will not. Hmm? Wise people know that today, I am in Christ, I am happy, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I have everything today. It's because of Jesus Christ. God wants to give this life to many through me. Hmm? Wise capture souls. We must be committed to obeying God for winning souls with our life. You may never really, really have an idea how much God will be pleased with you with such acts and how much He will bless you seeing the number of people saved through your life. God is watching what you are doing every day. Stop living a me life, my dear friends. Live for others. Hmm? Living for Christ means living for others. Hallelujah. Some people will never believe the gospel. We know that we have told gospel to many people. Many people will not believe. 
however something else can lead them to christ bible says that is our fruit of spirit that is our good works and our prayers first peter 3 1 and 2 god has attached many in our life our own family members our cousins our relatives our friends who are closer to us to be saved through us seeing our fruit of spirit you should not figure out how they will be saved they are so stubborn they don't want to know this truth you don't have to figure out he will do his work we cannot save any soul we are all god souls that is his work when we do what god says he will do his work so when we produce fruit of spirit naturally they will be drawn to god and second timothy 2:21 says when we are cleansed ourselves then we will be useful for honorable works in the master's house hmm? dirty vessels god will not use we should be cleansed we are here to be cleansed when we are cleansed god will use us for master's house god rewards us according to our fruits we cannot earn salvation no amount of good works can buy us the reward of god's salvation we cannot buy jesus christ has died on the cross for our salvation but we can lose the salvation if we are stubborn if we are adamant if we don't change our ways i cannot change i cannot walk through this clean way this is too clean i should love my enemy it's very difficult for me i cannot forgive if that is your attitude you are adamant isn't it what should be our attitude yes god is telling love your enemy pray for those who hurt you how patience grow in my characters i have given you my mind use my mind when you face the people we don't have all these characters these attitudes in christ slowly slowly we have to develop in a parable in luke 13 6 through 9 we read that a tree that doesn't bear fruit should be cut down a tree that is not bearing fruit it should be cut down these are all talking about christians these are all talking about children of god god expect us to be productive and get results this parable tells us that god expect and looking at us for our fruits you may be not knowing what god is doing with you god is watching how you are behaving with the other people what you are thinking about the other people what you are doing to the other people everything god is watching our heart attitude the other person may not know but he knows we are rewarded for our heart not for our our show of things we may be showing off and doing many things before the people having nothing in our heart we don't get anything from god so this parable tells us that god expects and looking into us to see the fruit john 4:23 and 24 bible says god is looking in the earth to see the people who are worshiping him in truth and in spirit he is looking today every church is full christians are going to church but god is looking who is worshiping him in truth and in spirit what is the truth this is the truth hmm? i have given you the spirit bear fruit be like me in this world that is the truth desire i am a dirty person i don't have any good character i have to change i should be like him desire he is looking into every heart hallelujah john 15:2 jesus said every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit he takes away all these scriptures believers don't want to listen they don't like this kind of scriptures see what it says every branch in me that doesn't produce fruit will be cut and thrown in the fire who are these branches you and me are the branches in the vine if you don't have fruit fruit of spirit we will be thrown away we may be coming to church and going but we are not the part of god's church then so after knowing the truth if we keep on sinning we have fearful judgment from god hebrews 
26 and 27. In some parables, Jesus compared spiritual accomplishments, that is bearing fruit of spirit, to investing and earning profit for the master. These scriptures you should go home and read. I am not reading over here. Matthew 25, 14 through 30 and Luke 19, 11 through 27. Hmm? These scriptures are telling, we should have spiritual accomplishments. Do you have spiritual accomplishments, my dear friends? What are your spiritual accomplishments? In this world, if you ask, do you have accomplishments? Yes, I have this degree. I have earned so much of money. I have so much bank deposits. I have so many properties in Bangalore or some other places. I have three, four cars. Hmm? That is your accomplishment in this world. What is your accomplishment in the spiritual world? You should have accomplishment in the spiritual world. Every time you are doing something for God, because God said, I will do. You are depositing something in heaven. I don't feel like doing. In fact, I cannot do. But God said, you are my child. Do this. It's very difficult for me. But I will do it. If our own children, if they don't obey, how do we feel? Do we think God will not feel bad if we don't obey him and live? Think. Read the Bible. Every scripture is for us to be obeyed. Not just to read and have some head knowledge and think that we are Christians. That is our life principle. I told you, we have read the scripture, Isaiah 37, 31. As the root goes downward, fruits come upward. Hallelujah. So we should have spiritual accomplishment. That is, we should make profit for the master. The scripture, if you read, you can understand. We should make profit for the master. That is, what profit we have to make? Godly characters growing in us. Serving God. We don't like. If anybody is hitting me, I feel like hitting them. But God is telling, no. Love him. Forgive him. That is what God is telling. But my hand, I will raise. Even to my children. Maybe husband's wife. I don't know how we are living at home. Hmm? Don't raise your hands to hit each other. Husband and wife. Or mother or father. To the children. Hmm? We should control. Self-control is a fruit of spirit. I don't feel like controlling myself. But God told me I should have the fruit of spirit. Self-control. I don't feel like. Hmm? So when we are doing what God says. We are depositing. In heaven, spiritual accomplishments. Yes, you have worldly accomplishment in this world. If I ask each one of you, you will tell how much property you have made in this world. After death, you are taking all those property and going, Lord, I have made this take me to heaven. Nothing. You yourself will not know where that property will go. Do you know those who are earning money? I am not telling you should not earn money. We need money. We should not borrow money. We should be blessed people. We should have enough money even to lend. Hmm? That is how we should have. That is prosperity. But only thinking about depositing, 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 making, making money, buying cars, buying properties over properties, only thinking about worldly accomplishment. With all that worldly accomplishment, no one is going to reach heaven. Just because of you have a Christian name, you will not reach heaven. Hmm? You should have spiritual accomplishment, spiritual fruits. God will see at the time of judgment. He will open the book. Everything what you have done, what you are doing is written in his book. You think, oh, Chumma Bible is telling. When you, when you die, dear friends, understand that this is a reality. One day, we have to say bye-bye to this world. Just think about that today. Do you know? After that, where you have to go? You think over? Or like other religion, do you believe? You will become monkey, donkey, or something like that? Hmm? Most of you will become... What? I should not tell that. Hmm? Barking people. Dogs. Hmm? Always barking. Anger, anger, anger. So Christ will judge my first will be. Dogs. Hmm? No? 
there is heaven, there is hell. You may say you have not seen, after your death you will see. Many will tell, I don't believe. What nonsense Bible is telling? What nonsense that preacher is telling? No other better work. But death is a reality. Hello? Death is a reality. That day, whatever the preachers are preaching, whatever is written in the Bible, you will see. Why we should stand here and scare the people? That is a preacher's duty, you think? We don't want to scare anyone. We are here to preach. We are the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to give life to us. Hmm? You may not like to hear, but you have to hear for your good life. So after your death, you are going to live eternally. Here, maybe maximum 90 or 100 over Kadam. Then life starts. Thousands, thousands, eternal. How long? We don't know. Hmm? So today you don't believe? But when you die, remember today what I have preached or what all written in the Bible. If you are not prepared for heaven, definitely you are in hell. You have to prepare. Just because you are a Christian, you are not going to heaven. You have to prepare yourself which you don't like. Which you don't like. Many things Bible says, I don't like. But for my good thing, I have to do because my father told I will do. Please understand, my dear friends. Humble down before God. Read the Bible. Bible is not writing any nonsense. Bible is not scaring the people. Bible is a life-giving book. It's our manual. Read. Obey. It will be difficult for you. People may not like what you are doing because they don't know. They have no idea what you are doing. But you know what you are doing. Don't compromise. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. So, every branch that is not producing fruit will be cut and thrown. Every branch, every Christian is a branch in the vine. If that branch is not having fruit, it will be cut and thrown. So, we need spiritual accomplishment, dear friends, according to your spiritual accomplishment, according to the fruit that you are growing, you will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Through you, generations will be blessed. Your generation will be blessed through you. Bible says, what a man is doing, seven generation has to suffer. Hmm? If you are doing good works, you are earning that good works for your next generation. Do you know that? Hmm? So, through you, you will be blessed, your family members will be blessed, your Generations will be blessed and through you many will be blessed. If you don't believe, read Psalms 128, 1 through 3. John 15, 4 and 5. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in a vine, neither you can unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, I in them, he it is that bears much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. Jesus is telling, I am the vine. To whom he is telling? Who are all in him. Not everyone's Lord is Jesus Christ. Hmm? You are in me. You are the branch. Abide in me. And my words should be there in you. That's the reason I told study the word. Store them inside. Meditate them to produce fruit. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you. You will bear much fruit. Fruit. Today we are learning about fruit. Without fruit, God is not going to answer our prayers. Without fruit, we are not going to be blessed in this world. Without fruit, we are not going to reach heaven. Hallelujah. This is the reason becoming an active part of God's church is so crucial. As the head of the church, Jesus is the head of the church, Colossians 1.18. And each member is the part of the body. And Ephesians 5, 29, we read, Christ nourishes his body, his church. Christ nourishes his church. That means your nourishment is coming from where? Your nourishment is coming from Christ through church. Please understand. Church is very important for you. Hmm? 
God has appointed His leaders to lead the church. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 12 we read, God has appointed His servants. They are not from Bible college. God has appointed. God has appointed His servants. If you are appointed by God, God will teach you. God will lead you. They are God's servants. Why? To equip you to serve God and grow spiritually. So those who are standing in unity with that leader and the church, they will produce fruit of spirit. Remember what I am talking? If you have forgotten, you can hear this message. It is in YouTube and understand what I have said. Because I don't want to keep repeating. Hmm? Hallelujah. So we need unity in the church. You need a church. You need the unity in the church. You need to have. You need to have. Unity with your leader and each other. You need fellowship with each other. Hmm? That is how you are drawing energy, nourishment from Christ. Christ nourishes his body. That is what we are reading in Ephesians 5.29. Christ is not nourishing separately if you are sitting at home, not being the part of Christ's body, that is church. So Jesus said, abide in me and you will bear much fruit, a branch must not stay firmly attached to the trunk to stay alive. If a branch is not staying firmly, he will not have life. Like branch draws strength and nourishment, protection, energy from the vine. We have to be connected. We have to be connected to the vine. That is the church. That is each other. Hmm? You should have a strong fellowship with each other. Please understand all these scriptures. Please read these scriptures. If you are not reading the scriptures, you will not know your father. A son can live without knowing who his father is. Tell me, if you are living without the knowledge of Bible, you are living without knowing who this father is. Hmm? You should know by reading the word. When we neglect our spiritual life and ignore the word of God to obey daily, especially in our challenging and confusing times, when we neglect our prayers for ourselves and prayer for others, when we neglect fellowship and when we neglect worship, we are like branches having no life, fruitless branches. Did you hear me? When you don't have prayer, when you don't have fellowship, when you don't have worship, when you don't study the word of God, hmm? you cannot produce fruit of spirit. You will be lifeless. That's why many of you cannot believe what I am talking even. So we need daily surrender, daily submission, daily decision to stay intimately connected to the vine because every day we will have persecution. Every day temptation will come to go away from Christ. Every day. Problems in this world, people of this world will draw us away from Christ. So every day we need surrender. We need Submission, we need daily decision. Then what happens? All these scriptures I am not reading. Psalms 92 14. In your old age, you will be protective. In your old age, many of you are thinking, I am above 60, I am going to die. No. Till you die, you should have good health. You should be vibrant. Dear friends, I will always tell if you serve God, God will serve you. But if you are staying for yourself, if you are living for yourself, doctors have to serve you. Hmm? Serve God. Bear fruit. You don't have to worry about anything. Till we die, we should be energetic. They are children of God. Hmm? We should have testimony. We should be different. We should be vibrant people. This scripture, if you read, you will understand Psalms 92, 14. Spiritual nourishment occurs in a reciprocal process of obedience to the word of God. Another important truth this morning you have to understand is John 15, 2, Jesus said, Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he will take away. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes. That is my final point. Let me explain. How patience to hear me. Eh? We have to bear, we have to bear fruit at the same time. He will be pruning. God will be pruning us also. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Why? 
so that we will bear good fruits, proper fruits. Jesus says every child of God, every believer in Christ should bear fruit. Otherwise, he will cut us away from him and he will also prune the branches that are in him. Yes, some believers, they came to church. They said, no, I cannot live this life. Many have left and they have gone back to their tradition or they have gone back to their life. It is very difficult. I cannot live this life. And seeing those people, many will mock at Jesus Christ and Pentecost also. Hmm? What he is telling, if you are bearing fruit, you understood the truth. Yes, this is the life I have to live today. But this is very difficult. But I will do. I will do. If you are such a person, understand, God will prune you. If you are not such a person, you are already cut and you are gone. But yes, you humble before God. I know that this is the life I have to live. You have surrendered to your life. Understand, God will prune. What is the meaning of pruning? Cutting away the unwanted growth. You know how a gardener will prune his plants. Some branches will be like this, like this, crooked. Eh? So, he will trim and make it proper. Like that, unwanted growth in us. He will chop them. When he chops, definitely we get pay. That is the process. Pruning often happens during our trials and challenging times because suffering is the time of the revelation of our hearts. We can't really grow spiritually and turn away from our sins if we don't identify our sins. Don't justify your sins or don't ignore your sins. Especially when you go through pain, understand something is happening. My father is doing some work in me. Hmm? You may be blaming others because of my husband I am suffering, because of my child I am suffering, because of that I am suffering. But God is doing some work in you, not in them. Please understand my dear friends, you want to do some work in them. You will take already the scissors, you will go behind them to chop their unwanted growth. God is telling, keep it there. I want, I want you to chop your unwanted growth. Yes, unwanted growths are there in them. I know. Let it be. I will deal with them. But you start chopping your unwanted growth. Every pain you and me are going through is chopping. Hallelujah. Pruning. In our relationship with others, we should bear fruit. God put fruit testers around us to produce right fruits. We have to mingle with different personalities at home, outside, in the office, in the church, different kinds of people. We will see a big amount of fruit salad before us. Not tasty. Hmm? Their attitude, our attitude at home so. At home, every day, good fruit salad, isn't it? But you don't eat because it is tasteless. Hallelujah. In times of troubles, that is in times of our fire, we can see good amount of fruit soil before us. Your circumstances don't create what is in your heart. This truth, dear friends, please understand. Don't blame others when you go through troubles. This is what a Christian needs to understand. God prunes us. John 15, the chapter today, please go home and study as a homework. God prunes every Christian. You are going through pruning time. That may be your sicknesses, your losses, you lost your job. God is pruning you. Unwanted growth, chop them. If children of God are still having unwanted growth, scissors is coming after some time, stop it. You know some of your growth are unwanted, but still many of you are growing in that branches. Chopping is coming. Even if you go away from Christ's way church, eh, I will not come with scissors behind you. But there is somebody, wherever you are, as long as you are living in this world, hmm, chopping will be there for you. Hallelujah. So that's the reason. Why don't you humble down before God? Do what God says. Don't see what people say. See only what God says. You have to give account to God, not to them. 
people may hate you. Bible is telling. Many will hate you when you stand for God. You think today I am here, people are not hating me. My family members are not hating me. My relatives are not hating me. It's written. When you stand for me, many people will hate you. My friends are not hating me. God haters will hate me. God lovers will love me. That's all. It's written. Hmm? So, don't feel bad. Look at God is the rewarder. If you keep pleasing the people, God cannot reward you. All these things will be happening. But people don't know. That's the reason I told you. Children of God are living without the knowledge of God. Without the knowledge of Father. How do they get the knowledge of Father? Study the Word. Listen to the preachers preaching. Teachers preaching. Hallelujah. So, what did I say? Our circumstances won't create our sins. Our circumstances won't generate immediate sins from us. Our circumstances won't create attitude in us. That is there in us. So, when a fiery situation comes, that will come out. You should know what are the extra growth in you. What are the real growth? Love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, self-control, goodness. Eh? All other things are extra growth. Anger, unforgiveness, sadness, fear, anxiety, all these are extra growth in you. Fear is extra growth. God is coming to cut it. Trust God. Believe. With your fear, you are going to achieve something. With your worries, you are going to achieve something. With your anxiety, you are going to achieve something. Nothing. Hallelujah. So, use your every pain to build character in you. Use your every pain to bear fruit in you. If you are able to produce fruit under trying circumstances, then eventually what bothered you will never bother. Did you get me? If you are able to produce fruit under trying situation, people were bothering you, situations were bothering you. They may remain the same, but nothing will affect you. Because you have chopped the unwanted stuff from you. Keep trimming unwanted sinful attitude. People are rebellious. People are unkind. Eh? With all such people we have to live. We cannot help it. That is this world. Hmm? You cannot keep blaming people. Our own family members may be arrogant. Not kind. Our own friend circle may be. We will have such people them all, we have to live such a life. Hallelujah! So, if you are able to produce fruit under trying circumstances, eventually what bothered you about that person or situation will never or no longer irritate or bother you. People around you are your fruit testers as you are fruit testers for others. Pain from your sicknesses and losses are God's pruning. We can immediately go to doctor. That is easy. That is the reason I will always tell if you are sick in the body, immediately don't run to doctor. Kneel down and ask God where I am going wrong. If you cannot understand, if you can understand where you are going wrong, submit to God and tell that I will not touch that sin, no Lord. No more, I don't want that extra growth. Think of chopping. God is chopping. I don't want that extra growth. I, I will not grow in that. Hmm? You submit. God is watching your submission. Immediately after your submission, there will come another test you have to pass. So, pain from your sicknesses and losses are God's pruning. Keep trimming unwanted sinful stuff. You will be all right. When you go through much pain in life, remember your pain has a purpose. The divine gardener is pruning you. Recognize them and bear proper fruit. Where you lack fruit, start producing them and see the miracle of God. Jesus is a miracle working God. Jesus is our healer. When do we see the healing? When do we see the miracle? When we are in His will and keep doing what God says. But if we are living as what we want or if we are living as what we are, we will not see Jesus Christ as a healer or a miracle working God. Pruning isn't comfortable but necessary. It is necessary. Even if you want, God will do. Even if I want, God will do in us. 
in me and you god will be doing the pruning process so submit to that pruning is uncomfortable but necessary and natural don't become burdened and overwhelmed by pruning that is painful situations as colossians 1 9 and 10 state continually ask god to fill you with the knowledge of his will so that you may live a life that is worthy of god bearing fruit these are the scriptures written in the bible have you ever seen colossians 1 9 and 10 read know the will of god and ephesians 5 10 says know what is pleasing to god and do here we don't want even if pastor says some things that are pleasing to God, you will forget after the sermon, after the church, you will forget and do what you want. Bible is telling, no, what is pleasing to God and do. Why? It's for your good. It's for your healing. It is for your prosperity. It is for your salvation. God wants anything. I want anything. Church needs anything. You tell me, my dear friends. It's you who are the needy. Hallelujah. So read Colossians 1. 9 and 10 and bear fruit. So don't be discouraged, but be encouraged through every trouble. Know the purpose of God and do what God says. You will definitely be successful. Let's close our eyes in prayers. Mm -hmm.